Hello, and welcome to another virtual happy hour Hip Historian Tour. We are glad to have you join us this evening. My name is Brenda Holt, and I am the Associate State Director of Community Outreach and Advocacy for the Arizona State Office of AARP. We are the nation's largest nonprofit, nonpartisan organization dedicated to empowering people 50 and older to choose how they live as they age. With a nationwide presence of nearly 38 million members across the nation and over 900,000 right here in Arizona, we are working to strengthen communities and we advocate for what matters most to families, such as health security, financial stability, and personal fulfillment. In honor of November being National Caregiver Month, we are focusing on navigating long-term care options. We will also be addressing mental health issues and more. Please visit us at aarp.org backslash caregiving for tips, tools, and other resources. Thank you for joining us again. Please be safe and be well. Take it away, Marshall. Well, hello, everyone. Good evening. I want to welcome you all to Arizona History Happy Hour. Thank you so much for being here. So I know some of you are watching on November 4th here and on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and even Twitch. So have we got a fun show this evening. And, you know, today is a special day. You know, there's lots of things being celebrated. I mean, tomorrow I'm actually up in Wickenburg with Eduardo Heidi as we talk about the 150th anniversary of a big mystery about the Wickenburg massacre and who actually perpetrated it. So that's going to be a lot of fun. That's bright and early. I know we're in Wicked Bigger. I think we start at 1030 at the Saguaro Theater, which I'm really excited about because I've never been inside that theater. So I'm looking forward to getting a chance to see what the inside of that looks like. Now, it is also International Stout Day. I mean, last week we were at Four Peaks, so it may have been more appropriate to have them this week. But, you know, we've got a lot going on this week to talk about. Um, it is also... Diwali, uh, which is a Hindu festival of lights observed every year, and many folks will be decorating their homes, their workplaces with lights, little oil pots, so all kinds of fun and such a beautiful festival, as well as this coming weekend is the 40th anniversary of Phoenix Pride. And that is, in fact, going to be the theme that you see kind of running throughout the entire episode as we get a chance to explore Arizona's history. Now, what can you expect? You know, we've always got a little bit of Arizona music history. We've got some trivia coming up. We always talk about a little Arizona town. So that's always fun, you know, as well as we've got a beverage. We're actually doing a new segment. I'm kind of kicking off um, from the vaults. So exploring different museums and some of the things they have inside. And so that's going to be a lot of fun as we start working on that and playing around with just looking at all kinds of history that's tucked away, sometimes in plain sight, sometimes not so plain sight. And we also have a special guest. And so as well as a libation. So if this is your first time here, you might be wondering, who is that man and why is he on my screen? So I am here. So my name is Marshall Shore. I'm also known as the hip historian. So I get to play around with a lot of just fun Arizona history. Now, I got here about 20, actually 22 years ago. I was working in Brooklyn at a beautiful Carnegie building and decided to trade the snow, the slush and all of that for 
a little library in South Phoenix where there was this rich oral tradition of the community. And that's one of the things that got me kind of, you know, let's start talking about that modern history. Um, they are also now in a brand, well, I can't say brand new because it's a few years old, but it's a pretty modern building, which is really nice. Now, upon moving here, we promptly moved into a 1956 ranch. When we moved in, it was oh so many tones of beige. I am happy to say now is a much more simplified seafoam and cantaloupe, just two colors. And it's pretty much a little time capsule of a house. Why, there you can see what my kitchen looks like today. All that buttercream yellow tile and matching appliances to boot. Now, as soon as we got here, all we kept hearing about how there's no history here. But you know what? I knew that wasn't true because every time I would go on an adventure, whether it was on foot, on my bike, in a car, there were so many amazing people, places, and stories. And so that's the fun of really doing exactly what we've been doing virtually for the last year and a half. Now, also, I think part of what made the Arizona that we all know and love today is all those GIs that either were stationed here, trained here, or passed through on the way to somewhere else. And after the war, they were moving here in huge numbers. And so that forever changed Arizona. Now, I'm also known as a hip historian. And, you know, that means I get to play a lot with Arizona history. I mean, like we were just talking about tomorrow morning up in Wickenburg. Um, coming up next Saturday, we have a Haunted History Phoenix tour coming up. So that's going to be fun. Um, that same day, we're also kicking off a monthly story, virtual storytelling event, where it's a very much a laid back, come talk about some of your history as just a way to help document and share how we all got to where we are at this moment. So you can track that down. Um, you can register. If you are on Facebook, you can go to AZ Gay History. If you're not on Facebook and you want to register, you know, throw me an email because I am happy to help you get registered for that. Also on Monday, um, sadly, it's not a in-person program, but I am going to be talking via Zoom with the Flagstaff Public Library, and we are going to be talking about Arizona LGBTQ history. And that's going to be a lot of fun. It's been a while since I've done that program, and we're adding new stuff into it, so it's always a rocking good time. Um, and in two days, I should find out if indeed I am an Emmy winner or if I can just say Emmy nominated. Either way, you know, kind of excited to be able to say Emmy nominated for sharing Arizona history. So more on that. Now, I see some of you have found the chat. Don't forget, you can also reach out to me via Facebook. You can do that also via Instagram, email or even reach out to me through the website. So all kinds of ways. Now I will ask if you're watching on Facebook, I know Anita's really good at this about sharing. So that way people can see how much fun we're having with Arizona history. So I'm going to ask you to do the same thing. Now, you know, I talk about being from a New York, spending time in a New York library, but before that I actually grew up in a little tiny town in Indiana. And so I love small towns for all their kind of quirkiness and fun and personality that they bring. So today we are going to talk about Ray, Arizona. Now, Ray, Arizona, if we look up in one of my favorite books, which is, oh, and my green screen's picking. Oh, there we go. So it is the Barnes, Arizona Place Names. So what does it say about Ray, Arizona? Well, we know it's in Pinell County. It was the Phoenix Christmas branch of the Arizona Eastern Railroad, seven miles north of Ray Junction. A man named Bollinger named a mine for his sister, Ray, back in 1870, and the town took its name from that mine. Now, if you tried to go to Ray today, you wouldn't have much luck because at one point it looked like this, a little thriving mining town. 
And you know what? The mine eventually overtook the entire city. So now there's not, well, there's nothing left of Ray. It is just gone. But you know, why are we talking about it today? Well, you know, there was a man who many have called the gay Ed Wood. So there, he was a, an actor, producer, writer, and he did Teenagers from Outer Space, which was a late 50s, one of those, no, B might even be too nice of a word, but it was one of those sci-fi movies. And it was filmed entirely in Hollywood. And so it was released and shown mainly in drive-ins across the country until in the early 60s when it got picked up by TV and was run on all kinds of late night TV shows. Now, here is Tom in his very own movie. So not long after this movie was released, he went a little odd. He actually petitioned to have his name legally changed to Jesus Christ too. That did not happen. It got <laughs> halted. Um, eventually, that movie, Teens from Outer Space, was played on Mr. Science Theater 3000. So it kind of got another little bump from there. It also had some special effects that were mimicked in Mars Attacks. I mean, even though it was a super low budget and got panned by the critics, a lot of folks really felt, you know, with the amount of money he had to work with, he did a really amazing job on this movie. Now, sadly, in 1970, he committed suicide. He was in his early 40s. And after that happened, then we found out that the star of Teenage from Outer Space, David Love, they had been romantically involved for at least 25 years. So there you go. A little bit of Ray Arizona history. And oh, good. I'm Someone found us on Switch. So thank you so much for being here. So. All right. So now we have our beverage. And PJ always has fun coming up with something that's kind of on theme. And so today we are having Sorrel Not Sorry, which is a little bit of Inclusivo tequila, Sorrel Carib soda, a little bit of key lime juice, cranberry bitters, green peppercorns, aloe vera, and egg whites. So at the moment I saw egg whites, it's like, he's testing me. He wants, he didn't even say shake it, but I noticed that there was one of those things like you put in your laundry. So because the egg white, you want it to get nice and frothy. And so he packaged this in a great little thing. So all I have to do is just do this. And look at that. So one of the things I love is that PJ's really, we've been playing around a lot with storytelling with a cocktail. And so this is our Sorrel Not Sorry. Now it's a riff on a cosmopolitan because he was literally thinking, it's like, you know, how do you take a cos? I mean, for cosmopolitan, you're already inclusive, full of celebration. And so he was like, you know, let's take that to another level. And so with the Sorrel, he really liked the idea of including that because it brings in, you can get a little bit of ginger out of it. You can taste rhubarb. You can get a little bit of lemon. So it's got a lot of things into it because, you know, nothing is just as it seems. So cheers. Ooh, and that's quite tasty. So now we have our very special guest. So... Let me bring on Ernie. Hello, Ernie. How you doing, Marshall? I am good. And yourself? Not too bad. Just tired right now. <laughs> I was going to say, you've been a little busy. So so what are you busy doing? We're putting together the Pride event. The uh, It takes a week to put everything together. And we have tents and we have lots of entertainment. We're 
We've got. I know the, the uh, list of entertainers this year. I think is longer than I've ever seen it before. It, it's pretty. It's pretty big. Uh, we've increased the size of the art, the Latin stage. Yeah. Uh, we have increased the size of our VIP uh, area. Um, we've, I, from what I understand, uh, pre-sales are doing very, very well. Um, I'm not shocked. I mean, because there's something for everybody. I mean, that's when I was looking at the yeah. music list. I was like, hey, you know, there's folks I recognize on there as well. Absolutely. I mean, there is a very wide variety of entertainers this year. Right. Which is really great. And so I know the festival is going on Friday or actually Saturday and Sunday. Correct. With the parade being to um, Saturday. Saturday morning. It steps off at 10 o'clock. Ah, so we're going to have to get up bright and early to be able to get a, a good spot <laughs> as well as uh, just to get in line for everything. It's going to be interesting because we've never had the, the parade on Saturday. And I know that's kind of, it's like, usually it's on Sunday. Yeah. I have to be up at, I have to be there at five in the morning. So it's, it's going to be a long day for me. <laughs> Indeed it will be, but it'll, it'll be a fun day. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's, I think one of the things that's important about, I mean, you know, friends have said, you know, why do we ha still have pride? And it's like, you know, I know so many places where people can't have a festival like this Absolutely. still in the U S if not even globally. So that's part of the fun of being able to celebrate ourselves. What people don't realize, you know, a lot of uh, uh, younger generation feel that we've, you know, we've gotten things like marriage equality and so forth, but the uh, things that come along with marriage equality are abundance. I mean, things like being able to go into a hospital with your loved one, which you couldn't do back in the eighties. Um, when the AIDS crisis hit, you know, the, it was, uh, left just to the, uh, um, to the family members. And if you weren't a family member, you couldn't see them. Ruby. Sorry. <laughs> Somebody wants to join in the party. So, um, Anita yeah. asked about the route. So the parade is going up third street, correct? Correct. So third street starts off at Thomas and coming north to the, uh, festival grounds on um, Indian school and uh, third street. So very good. So that's gonna be a lot of fun and pride is celebrating 40 it's 40th anniversary this year. Correct. Which is kind of a monumental. I mean, I think that's really cool that we're, we've been doing this for 40 years. We've been doing things prior to that, which I think we're going to get into a little bit that right. it's like pride was not the very first thing. There were other things. Yes. Uh, so was, but before we go yeah. into all of that, because we that comes up, I know, in some of the trivia. So what we do here with trivia is um, we'll go through all the questions and the multiple choice answers. Then we'll do a little bit of Arizona music break. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about some of those answers because some of them might surprise you a little bit. So and, you know, and that's the fun. Now you can keep track of your answers a pad and paper on your arm with a marker on some ice cream and chocolate syrup, but it probably will get a little <laughs> melty and you might eat it before the end of trivia. You know, whatever makes you happy, you have fun. That is the goal of what we are doing. So our first question, who was responsible for organizing the very first Phoenix pride March? Was that a Kirk Baxter and Carol Mueller, B, Bob Smith and Richard Ramos, C, Joni Mitchell and Roberta Flack, or D, Captain Antoniel. Now, some of those answers you might be able to just kind of cross off because you know that's not right, but maybe it is. You never, well, actually you do. Well, you're going to find out. So we'll just leave it at that. All right. So question two, what original song was played and sung by its creator at the first Pride rally at the state capitol? A, we are here. B, out of the closet and into the streets. C, we are the world. Or D, without you. So one of those songs was, done, was actually played at the, at the state capitol by the 
creator and musician. So, all right, moving on to question three. What events happen as a part of Phoenix Pride Festival? A, pageant, B, a parade, C, Nash performers, or D, all of the above. So what events do you think happen as a part of Phoenix Pride Festival? All right. Moving on to question four. What well-known gay cartoonist was a board member in the 90s? Was it A, Sean Martin, B, John Sean Klamick, C, Jim Newberry, or D, Jim Calhoun. All right. So one of those folks was a well-known gay cartoonist and also board member back in the 90s. All right. Question five. Gary Magnum, a former Pride, member, Pride board member, was also known as A, Tish Tanner, Arizona's Clown Princess, B, Cassandra Blanks, C, Earthquake and the Tremors, or D, Dusty Chambers. So a former Pride board member was known by what name on stage? Question six. In what city was the first official Phoenix Lesbian Gay Pride Festival held? Was it A, Scottsdale, B, Phoenix, C, Goodyear, or D, Tempe? So which city was the first official Phoenix Pride Festival held in? All right. Question seven. What stadium has the annual festival been held in and was it held in in the early 90s? Was it A, the Sun Devil Soccer Stadium, B, Phoenix Municipal Stadium, C, Tempe Diablo Soccer Fields, or D, Chase Field? Where was the annual Pride Festival held in the early 90s? Question eight. What surprised the Tempe police the most while working at the festival grounds? Was it A, the lack of nudity? B, straight people having sex in the porta potties? C, scotch tape nipples? Or D, the variety of bondage gear? All right, so one of those surprised Tempe police. Which do you think it was? What names has Phoenix Lesbian Gay Pride Committee been known as? A, Arizona Central Pride, B, Desert Pride, or C, the Phoenix Lesbian Gay Pride Committee, or D, all of the above? All right. What disaster happened back in 2001 that caused the Pride Festival to shut down? Was it A, a downtown Phoenix blackout? B, a microburst? C, an earthquake? Or D, a volcano erupted? Oh my gosh, none of those sound pleasant at all. So what disaster do you think happened back in 2001? All right. Well, while you're locking in your final answers and maybe eating up your ice cream with your answers on it, so you won't know what you thought the answer was, we're going to take a little bit of an Arizona music break. And so we are going to talk a little bit about a musician that from Arizona that most people have never heard of. So his name is Troy Walker. So he actually was born in Illinois. His father got a job running the Chandler School for Boys. And he was known to be a really good singer. And so he eventually went into the Air Force. And when he got out, he wanted to go to Hollywood because he wanted to see where life happened. He walked into a bar and somebody said, hey, can you sing? 
and they pretty much shoved a microphone into his face. After he sang a couple songs, they said, we want you to come back. And he came back every night for quite some time. Now, he had a very popular first album, which is Troy Walker Live. The second album that he did, he actually recorded, but it didn't make it through. Um, it had a cover of a Julie Earle song, a little, a little thing called Joe. And so it was about basically the song was him singing about his love for another man. So that album didn't get produced as it was supposed to. And he refused to change that song or remove it from the album, which would have allowed that to happen. Um, he did wind up seeking private funding and eventually it did get funding. And from there, he went on and became kind of the toast of Hollywood. In fact, here's actually an ad that ran in L.A. about when he was performing right here in Phoenix. Now, one of his big jokes was a lot of times, a lot of times the clubs he was playing in would be straight clubs and he would walk on stage and announce it's like, you know, mama wanted a girl, daddy wanted a boy. They got me. So it made them both happy. And so he went on. And when I was researching, I discovered that somebody has created a documentary about him. He is still around in West Hollywood. Um, I tried to track him down. Sadly, wasn't able to get a hold of him. But I really do want to watch this documentary because it sounds fascinating what he was doing in the mid 60s pre Stonewall. So look for more information about him because I know I am. Maybe some of you saw him on stage. That's half the fun of this, is you never know. All right. So, who was ready for some answers? I know I am. So, who was responsible for organizing the first Phoenix Pride marches? Why that would have been A, Kirk Baxter and Carol Mueller. So, Ernie, tell us a little bit about Kirk. Well, Kirk's been around for a long time. He's worked within uh, the community in different capacities a lot during the HIV era, uh, helping start several uh, nonprofits for people with living with HIV and helping raise money and awareness. Um, he is a staple here in Arizona and he still uh, does so much. And a lot of people don't know who he is, a lot of the newer people, I guess, or younger people. And he is truly an amazing person truly amazing he, he has given his heart his soul his time uh to help those who need it originally he wasn't well he was asked to help uh do the marches by bj bud she didn't want to get involved as in running it but she wanted to get people started doing it she talked to several people several people uh Basically, it kind of it kind of fell to the wayside. And then when she met uh, Kurt, I believe Kurt was only around 19 at the time. Um, he was, I think he was going to ASU, if I remember. Yeah, at that point he would have been going to ASU and when he took all this on. Yeah, and he and Carol Mueller, who I've only met once years, many, many, many years ago, um, they um, they were able to organize this grand walk. I actually. Uh, stood out on the street watching and it ended up joining in. I wasn't going to, I was just going to be a spectator. And next thing I knew I was in the middle of the street. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. Yeah. So indeed Kirk has been around for quite a while and such a staple of the community for all the work that he's done for so many organizations and to benefit other folks as well. And I'm also glad you brought up the name BJ Bud. Yes. Now, there was an amazing woman. Uh, you know, she saw uh, that Arizona needed, you know, history. They needed to be enlightened. Uh, there's a, a uh, library named after her, the B.J. Budd Library. I believe part of it is now in AS at ASU. And, right. There's an archive um, named for but, her as well at ASU. So. Right. She used to collect as many LGBT books uh as possible and would put them into, you know, into her own little library. 
which he would apparently uh, let others read and they bring back and so forth. Uh, it was housed for a few for a few years in the uh, in the community one of the community centers, actually two of the community centers we've had here. Um, she's got a long history. She started the first. Uh, I would say gay publication that I heard of, which is Sunday's child. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing a couple of, of the uh, publications, but they were hard to find. Um, but she was definitely a staple in early uh, LGBTQ history. Indeed she was. All right. So what original song was played and sung by its creator at the first Pride rally at the state capitol. And the song was titled We Are Here by Bill Folk. So was it just kind of a walk down the street to get to the capitol? Yeah, it, it was a um, basically a march and it rallied up to the state capitol. The march, I would say probably about 100 people uh, that I could tell, but you know, when you're uh, it started, I believe, somewhere around First Street in Washington to the state capitol, which is what, 19th Avenue in Washington. Um, but there was probably several hundred people, 300 or more people at the at, there at the rally. They had speakers and they had uh, Bill Folk singing. It was um, and people sitting on the lawn and stuff like that. So it was it was very empowering. Well, I, can remember, I remember people talking about there would be certain areas where that would be taped off where if you were in that area, you couldn't be photographed Correct. because people were so afraid of if word got out that they were gay, you lesbian. You could lose your job back then easily. Right. Um, and with Arizona being a right to work state, it's it, there really is no recourse for was no recourse back then. Uh, for people who were set up to be LGBTQ. Uh, I, mean, I myself have lost a job because of that. Um, wow. So it's, it, it's, I mean, there, there's people who are sympathetic, but the reality is they can fire you for it. And uh, we still have to worry about that sometimes, depending on who you work for. Mm-hmm. All right. So what events happen as a part of Phoenix Pride Festival? Oh, my gosh. I mean, there was all of the above, which should have shocked no one, I hope. So the fact that there's a pageant to help raise funds, the parade, Nash performers. So it's going to be an exciting weekend. It is. I mean, like I said, the, the amount of talent that we have local and you know from international means is is going to be awesome and i mean it's a great time for everybody if you're not you don't know much about the latin music and so forth there's a huge stage to go and spend some time and you know listen i mean there's some great performers right as well as some amazing djs as well we didn't give it right. to i mean all the different music that's going to be there I mean, I know DJ Q is going to be there on Sunday, so I'm looking forward to that. So lots of fun. Yes, we, there's and there's, uh, was it uh, one of the stars from uh, RuPaul's Drag Race? Oh, and Ray. Ginger Minj is going to be Ginger there. Minge. I've got friends who are going just to see her. She's going to be RuPaul's. hanging out in the VIP lounge area. Ah, very nice. All right. So what well-known gay cartoonist was a board member of Phoenix Pride back in the 90s? And that was John Sean Klamek. So tell us a little bit about John. Well, John was a kind of a, uh, I would say, headstrong person. <laughs> um, he came from larger cities that had uh, larger populations of, of gay people and he wanted to do more to bring, you know, bring more people out. But he just, not being from Arizona, didn't realize that that's just not how a lot of Arizona's zonings worked. 
um, for many, many years, if you were at a gay bar and uh, there'd be police officers parked outside waiting for you to take off so, just so they could stop you and maybe uh, arrest you for you know, drunk driving or whatever, just harass you. And of course, they posted names back then uh, into, the, into the paper. Um, and so a lot of people, a lot of, especially a lot of the lesbians, uh, they formed tight friendships out of the bars and so forth. And it was more of a, um, I wouldn't say click, I would say just a community of women and some men that were, you know, they had their friends. That's, that's who they associated with, uh, it was like their own close little knit neighborhood in in a in one way or another. Um, so trying to get a lot of people out to a festival was really difficult. It was one of the things that I tried to do while I was the president in the nineties, and truthfully, it wasn't easy. I can believe that. All right. So question five. Gary Magnum, a, perf a former Pride board member, was also known as A. Tish Tanner, Arizona's Clown Princess. That's such a great picture of her. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for that. <laughs> I actually, I'm, when Tish passed away, I ended up being the executor of his of his stuff so i basically got to keep some of the things and i got some photographs that most people don't have um his mother was very elderly and couldn't do anything about it and his brother had didn't really want to have anything to do with it so uh i was the one that had to organize his funeral and the whole bit and it was it was really rough because i'd known Gary, since he moved to Phoenix, he actually was a roommate at one point in time ah. when he first moved to Arizona. And he was dating my, he was dating my roommate, and uh, he kind of lived with us for several months. <laughs> and he later, you know, he developed his persona. He became well-known within the community, raised thousands and thousands of dollars for the community, especially during the AIDS crisis. Um Losing him was very difficult for our our board because he was much loved and he was much loved in the community. Well, you know, it's funny. So I know at Pride, there's the Tish Tanner stage. Correct. Um, people may not know if you go to the Pemberton, which is Second Street, north of Roosevelt, kind of an adult kind of bar restaurant area there is this dress form that's about 25 foot tall yeah um its name is it's named after tish for tish tanner it lights up it's really it beautiful lights up i mean and it was it's big bold just like tish was yes <laughs> so he was uh he, he was definitely a character and the one thing that a lot of people who knew tish was he was always trying to get everybody in a dress always <laughs> Uh, it's a shame I didn't do it while he was still alive, but I was, I, we, after he passed, we did a uh, fundraiser and I, I wore a lot of his clothing at that time. And I actually used one of the answers is my so-called drag name that Tish gave me, which was Eartha Quake. And I added the tremors. I had a backup group. So. <laughs> oh, Nice. <laughs> and the last one, Dusty Chambers, was uh, Linda Hoffman, who she was uh, the president after me and was president for from, I think, 2001 to 2007. All right. And what city was the first official Pride Festival held? And it was in, Fe well, it was City of Phoenix, but wow, it was down at Corona Ranch out in Levine. Yeah, I don't believe it was called Corona Ranch back then. I think, believe it was called something else, but okay, uh, it was, yeah, it, it was pretty far away. And that was always the problem with the, the most of the festivals is when uh, they couldn't get a, a, a date and a location, you know, uh, which was generally located for everybody. 
So they had to make do. Um, the first one was South Phoenix, and then they moved to uh, Tempe. Tempe opened and welcomed them with open arms. And they all that we had to do was ask, and they were just ready and willing to help us. Unfortunately, in Tempe, it was very difficult to get to and from because transportation was really bad, bad back then. Uh, unless you had a car, you pretty much couldn't go. And our numbers were always very small back then. Uh, I think till we moved to Phoenix, we were always under around 10,000 uh, people. All right. What stadium was the annual festival held in in the early 90s? And it was Tempe Diablo Soccer Fields. And, and that's totally different than what it used to look. Basically, I would say, yeah, that's that's the remodeled version. Yeah. I, the, quite, was, I mean, I'm sure they tried to get rid of all the old photos. Yeah. There, was just, there was just grass. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Just grass, and we would build. Basically, I was the logistics director at that time, and we built, or I built, a city, a little city down there. It was because we. It was in June. Uh, the uh, originator of the of Pia of Phoenix Lesbian Gay Pride Committee, she wanted to keep us in June, but it was too hot, and so I mean, we had humongous tents out there, and our event would go into midnight because we weren't that close to a lot of homes and so forth at that time. Ah, uh, okay. So, and it was too hot during the day to actually, you know, yeah. hold the festival. And at one point, I think we were doing Friday night, Saturday night and Sunday night. Um, so it was a three day festival, but nobody made a whole lot of money till the end of the day when people would come down there. Cause like I said, it was June. <laughs> Indeed. Now, probably our next question is the most, the one that everyone's been like, hmm, what was the right answer for that? They'll probably be a little surprised by it. And so be just like the Tempe police. And it was B, straight people having sex in the porta potties. What? Yeah. Uh, three uh. years. Three years straight, we kept having police Oh, officers. that's a bad pun. That's a really yeah, bad pun. I know. Uh, <laughs> we, we had uh, police officers breaking up people having sex within the porter potties. And they were, well, we were all kind of confused why straight people were coming to our event to have sex in the porter potties. It wasn't until <laughs> the fourth year that they actually uh, caught two guys in one of the porter potties. And all they could say was, well, at least it's the right couple, you know, <laughs> the right sex. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the talk of Tempe for quite a while. <laughs> I'm sure it was. All right. What names have been used by the Phoenix Lesbian and Pri Gay Pride Committee? And it is all of the above. It was Arizona Central Pride, Desert Pride, and Phoenix Lesbian and Gay Pride Committee. The original name is uh, Phoenix Lesbian Pride Committee, Gay Pride Committee. It, that's how we were incorporated. Uh, but people couldn't, re un couldn't remember the name. So um, they changed it to Desert Pride only to find out that Desert Pride was trademarked, so they had to change it. Uh, ah. So we... Came out with uh, Arizona Central Pride. A lot of people wanted Central Arizona Pride, but that in here in Arizona, that's the name after the water system that comes runs through Phoenix. And exactly, uh, yes, yeah, CAP. Also, uh, the Committee Action Program, which actually my mother was a social worker for for seventeen years, which was how the how the groups back then they would uh, help the elderly, they'd help uh, people of color, people who were uh, LGBTQ. I mean, they didn't matter. If they needed help, they helped people. Uh, they helped bring in, um, help people who were coming to this country to become citizens and so forth. They would go to uh, houses of the elderly to help them with their taxes. Uh, they encompassed a lot of things. 
Uh, Arizona Central Pride seemed to be the most um, logical for us. Uh, yes, we had to keep saying Phoenix afterwards, but it, you know, it's what it is. I was surprised to see that picture uh, that uh, that you had up there with the Arizona Central Pride because that is a postmark. We back then we got oh. uh, we got the um, uh, the gay com uh, post uh, master uh, post postal workers came to our event they created this uh postal stamp and put it on stamped it onto the letters and so forth so the and uh i believe some uh postcards so you could buy them they raised money and you know we had something that most places didn't have as a souvenir uh a right. letter with our stamp on it for that that year wow all right, so our last question is, what disaster happened back in 2001 that caused the P Phoenix Pride Festival to shut down? Well, this is a sore spot. <laughs> and indeed, it was a microburst. Yeah. Uh, originally, uh, when we were seeking um, weather insurance um, for the event, they won't wouldn't let us purchase the insurance until it was a week out. Um, if you if it was earlier than that or later than that, you couldn't buy it. And they wanted so much money for it that we really could not afford it. We were told by the weather service. Well, I was told by the weather service that it did. It looked like there was going to be a light rain in the northern part of. Phoenix, and that it, that was it. Light rain. Um, nobody expected a microburst. Absolutely nobody. They, um, the day was beautiful, sunny. Yeah, um, I remember that day well. The parade was went off without a hitch. It was great. There was we had more people uh, that year than we'd ever had um, showing up because everybody was excited. Cause that was, we had finally gotten RuPaul, somebody, everybody had been asking us to get, but we just didn't have the money to, you know, solidify that deal. We finally did. And we were, we spent a lot of time trying to hype up RuPaul. Unfortunately, the microverse kind of, uh, squashed that entire thing indeed and i remember it was like and you know and it's so funny because there are there really aren't any photos of it because everyone was taken so off guard by it. it it was you know first it was it was clear sunny and then it wasn't <laughs> and then out of nowhere came this storm so nobody was there with a camera to be like it was before people just had everybody had a phone had a phone camera yeah and so there i mean as far as i know there aren't any photos of it even even like echo doesn't have any yeah. Um, truthfully, like I said, it, it came on so fast. I mean, there were people who were hurt during that time. Uh, tents were literally yanked out of the ground and they were flying across. People had been hit by tents. They had broken yeah. arms. Uh, I understand somebody was trying to cross. I don't know why they were doing it. Trying to cross Central when the visibility was basically zero. And they got hit by a car, which is oh, God. just sad. But yeah, um, you know, thankfully our regular insurance took care of a lot of that, but it didn't help us recoup the loss for that whole event. Uh, we were lucky enough that the hype and the preparation for that year uh, it was my last year. It was going to be my last year. Um, so I spent countless hours uh, days trying to make sure that we were well advertised uh, well marketed so that we could bring in the largest uh, crowd ever and the police said that their estimate was 30,000 at the time wow. the storm hit 30,000 for us was unheard of at that time right. we were doing about between 15 and 17,000 at the time so we basically doubled our attendance and they figure if we had, if the storm had not happened, we would have came out smelling like roses. The one thing I do have to say about this whole thing is my total 
the thing I always wanted while I was with was Phoenix Pride was that I wanted some way to get the community more involved. We just didn't have the community backing us. The storm, though it was as bad as it was, it brought the community together. Very much so. I mean, it accomplished what I really wanted to see, what a lot of us wanted to see. Uh, so even, you know, a silver lining out of a storm. I mean, it, I don't I don't think we'd be as big today if it wasn't for the fact that so many community members, people from the community, uh, you know, stores, organizations and so forth, they stood by us. And because they, everybody was pretty much afraid that we were going to shut down because we had, you know, basically lost an entire day. Um, right. And then, this, of course, the following day, it just rained and rained and rained. And there was nothing we could do about it. Right. So, all right. Well, people always ask the no The next question coming up is, how did you do? And I always like to say, you know, it doesn't matter whether you how many you got right or wrong. Now you know the more to the story. Kind I got of them all way. right. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have no doubt that you got them all right. But so, yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of fun to people post. I mean, like Jeff got five out of ten. So, so Ernie, thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy, hectic organizing, helping put pride on for this weekend. Um, I know I will see you there this weekend. It, yeah, I, I will pray, probably be a disheveled mess, but yeah, I'll be there. <laughs> so, well, very good. Thank you so much for joining us and have, I'm sure you will oh, cool. sleep very well tonight. I know I have to be there at five in the morning. So, so yeah. Um, so your bedtime's coming up pretty soon. Yeah. Five. Well, I don't need three hours sleep, so I'm lucky there. Okay. Um, very good. Plus we're, I am this year. I am because we're doing community um, grand marshals. I am one of the grand marshals in the parade. Oh, district. nice. I didn't realize you were one of the grand marshals. Yeah. There, there are, I think uh, seven or eight of us that from the community that are, uh, grand marshals, the community grand marshals. Very cool. So hope to make, see you guys out there. I hope you guys have a great time and enjoy yourselves. Be good to yourselves. Indeed. Ernie, have a great rest of your night and I will see you this weekend. Okay. Take it easy. You too. Oh my gosh. That was so much fun getting to learn about kind of the origins of pride. And so thank you all so much. That was so exciting. So now you will see why I said, you know, you might want to share this on Facebook because no one else is really talking about us. I know it's like back pre COVID. We actually did a little bit with one of the local TV stations, but I don't think that ever came to fruition because COVID hit. And so this is really the first pride we've had this. So last year just didn't happen at all. So it's going to be an exciting night and day and well, actually a whole weekend of fun stuff so i'm happy to announce so we have from the vault and so today we are being whisked all the way to washington dc to the smithsonian and the smithsonian houses an artifact from right here in phoenix that actually has a connection to phoenix pride as well and it is the trans flag so monica helms back in 1999 designed the very first trans flag, which then flew the following year in the Phoenix Pride Parade. Now that flag that she created is actually now sitting in the Smithsonian. So I think it's really cool that a little bit of LGBTQ history is right now sitting in the Smithsonian, the museum to all museums. So coming up next week, we have Oscar de la Salas as our guest. So that's going to be a lot of fun. He is a local architect and kind of a social light around town, involved in so many different organizations, um, helping promote MC, being a gracious host to so many different events. So that's going to be really fun and one not to miss. Um, if you are still looking for something to do right after this, if you go on to AARP, 
Arizona, you can sign up for Kenny Lattimore. They are doing a concert at eight, starting at eight o'clock. And it is basically for caregivers. It's a free couch concert. So sit on your couch, enjoy some music as Kenny will just amaze you with his talent. So happy that they are doing this type of thing. Cause you know, caregiving can be quite an, a task, emotional and physical. So I am so happy that they are doing that. So you can log on right after this and take a look for him. Now, also feel free if you have any stories that you want to share, suggestion or comments, you can always reach out through, you know, the Facebook, the Instagram, or even good old fashioned email works. Now, as we get ready to say good night, I always want to give a, Chris, a shout out to Chris and Cole who created that amazing intro video as well as PJ and our outro video. You don't want to leave for this because so back in 20, well, you know, every year pride has protesters, people out there saying, you know, you shouldn't be here. And so my friend Todd helped organize a flash mob that did a really great job of diffusing the situation. And so that is how we are going to end tonight's episode because it is such a joyful moment to see folks out there supporting each other and doing great work in the community. So again, thank you all so much. Have a great rest of your night. It's all gonna be over one day, hobo. It's all gonna be over. One day God's gonna put you in hell. Yeah, you, you, yeah, I'm judging you. You're not hard to judge. I'm judging you. Yes, I am. All these beautiful people out here. I love you guys. And gals. And transgenders. And virgins. Yeah, let's straight you off. Happy Pride. Are you ready, baby? You're beautiful, too. All right, let's do this. Drop the music. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you can protest. There's nothing.